Let's talk about light pollution. If you're an amateur astronomer or an astrophotographer like me, chances are you know how horrible light pollution can be and how it affects our lives and our hobby. But if you're a non-stargazer, you might not even be aware of what light pollution is and the issue. It's just not something you think about. Too much light, excessive light. What exactly is light pollution? It's excessive, obtrusive, artificial light in an outdoor environment. It's light that just washes out the night sky where you don't see any stars anymore or very few. It disrupts ecosystems. It has negative health effects. It interferes with astronomical research. It's a big deal and more and more people are becoming aware of this global problem. A hundred years ago, everyone had access to a dark night sky. You could see the Milky Way and the stars and it was just a part of being human was to look up at the stars. These days, there's lots of parts of the world where people have never seen the actual night sky. It's just completely gone. The big issue is we need to actually light up the areas we intend to light and avoid the excess light and the glare that's spewing out that has no benefit at all other than just creating a lot of light pollution. There's an organization called the IDA, the International Dark Sky Association, and I'm a member. And their mission is to help protect the night sky from light pollution. So not only do they celebrate international dark sky locations and highlight them, but they also educate and advocate policymakers and teach about responsible outdoor lighting and the overall problem of light pollution. I'm an IDA member myself and I do it to help protect some of my favorite places. The only IDA designated site I've been to was Cherry Springs State Park and home of the Cherry Springs Star Party. It's one of my favorite events ever and just one of my favorite places. So I like to think that in a small way I'm helping to sustain that place as a dark sky area for future generations. There's a few ways you can better understand the amount of light pollution in your specific area from home or some of your favorite places to visit for astrophotography. The light pollution map is a handy reference to see the amount of glow usually radiating from a big city center outwards. At home, I'm a Bortle scale class seven. To be honest, I try to hide the light pollution in my videos because it takes away from the overall astronomy experience. But make no mistake, it is all around me. The street lights across the street from me, my neighbors, outdoor lighting, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. That's what's scary about this whole thing. This video was sponsored by Skillshare, the online learning community with thousands of classes on pretty well every creative topic you could think of. I'm personally taking the Marquez Brownlee YouTube class right now because he's one of my biggest inspirations early on for starting a YouTube channel. I know there's lots to learn from a guy like that. They have classes on a lot of photography related stuff from landscape photography to beginner DSLR stuff to Lightroom to Photoshop and these are all premium classes with no ads. You get access to thousands of videos for less than $10 a month if you sign up for the yearly plan. The first 1,000 of my subscribers that click the link in the description to Skillshare will get a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore the classes available. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I tapped into the Astro Backyard community via Facebook to see what kinds of levels of light pollution you're shooting in in your backyard or from your favorite place to do astrophotography. And man, there were a lot more Bortle scale class eights and nines than there were twos or ones. There was only one Bortle class one and I think two twos and then a lot of sixes, sevens, more of the kind of the skies I'm used to at home. So I put together this graphic to show the difference of shooting the Orion constellation from a Bortle scale class one all the way to an eight site. I think the biggest thing I noticed in terms of astrophotography, at least when shooting wide angle nightscape style shots from different levels of light pollution is the amount of details and just the amount of stars you can see in those lower Bortle scale classes uh, really stood out to me. International Dark Sky Week is coming up here in April 
and the whole idea of it is just to educate others about the problem of light pollution and how we can actually get better. Hopefully people just become more aware of the problem of light pollution and why we need to take it seriously. There's a few activities that the IDA lists you can do with your family and friends just to spread the word about the problem of light pollution and how you can help yourself. So I urge you to take part in International Dark Sky Week. If you're an astrophotographer, you're well aware of the problem of light pollution and you really start to resent some of that irresponsible outdoor lighting that's just shining straight up in the sky. You value a dark night sky and the beauty of the Milky Way and the stars and you don't want to lose it. So I think it's really important for humans to have that connection with the night sky and space and the universe. So that's why I take it so seriously. I feel like this is going to be an uphill battle for many years to come to fight against light pollution but it's something where we all need to take part to actually make a difference. And I definitely think it's worth it to save our night skies from light pollution and hopefully you do too.